All right, I'm sorry. All right, so we see chapter 11 now. Um, let's do a, a quick review, and let's, let's get back to where we were. Now, remember, we opened up with this aspect of there's a situation where Lazarus, uh, the, uh, the brother of Martha and Mary, is sick. And then it turns out that a, a message is sent to Jesus. All right, and in verse 2 it says, and it was, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with the ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So that identifies who this is. All right. So these are the these are brothers and sisters, Martha, Mary, Lazarus, and the, and it goes on to say, whom Jesus loves. All right. Um, now in verse four it says, and when Jesus had heard, he said, this sickness was not unto unto death. Now we talked about that, right? How many things that when we look at it, we consider it as already dead. It's done. It's finished. It can't be helped, and we already saw. You, we go on. We done buried that thing. That was part of the past. It's gone on. It was a sad situation. It was unfortunate, but we move on. But then the Lord comes back and say, no. Just because you figure there is no way to resurrect this, or you figure there's no way to take care of this, remember, I am the Lord the Lord of all, right? We're going to talk about that in just a bit as well, all right? So then um, we got to the point to where in, um, in uh, verse 8 it says, And his disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews sought to stone thee. Why goest thou thither again? Now, Jesus was saying, we're going to go, and we're going to go uh, see Lazarus uh, because he's sleeping. And then now the first concern that his disciples have was what? This danger. You're not a very popular man amongst the religious leaders. And they're looking to stone you. All right? And we talked about this before, how Jesus would not allow himself to be put to death by what? Stoning. Because stoning was a righteous method of execution uh, that was put forth during the time of who? Moses. Jesus was not put to death righteously. He was put on the cross unjustly, Yet, even in that, he still was not put to death. He did what? He laid down his life. All right. So he would not allow them to even give the appearance. That's why the, the scripture says, do not even give the appearance of what? Of evil. So he would not even give the appearance that he had a righteous death. He gave the appearance of his death being one that was unrighteous, which is why he had to be put to death by something other than stoning. All right. All right. So then we uh, talked about that. All right. And then, um, once again, the disciples were confused. We saw that in verse 14, when Jesus had to explain to them plainly, Lazarus is not sleeping as you think, though uh, in my frame of reference, from my understanding of how real life is, he's sleeping from my point of view. But from your point of view, yeah, he's dead. I have to tell you that he's dead. All right. And so that also lets us know that our definition of death especially those who don't understand scripture. I mean, you talk about the everyday, you know, people, especially people that, that don't believe in God, their definition of death is, is incorrect because they're only looking at death from a point of view that we can see and not from a point of view that is true, which is an eternal point of view, all right, or God's point of view. All right, so the Lord Jesus explained that to them, okay? Then we went on and we saw that Martha and Mary, they come out uh, and they hear that Jesus is on his way and then in verse 24, Mary said unto him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection and the last day. And then verse 25 is where we really get to the point where we, where we talked about Jesus is all in all. But then he, when you break it down, when you open that all in all up, he's a whole bunch of little. That's why he's all in all. But you can actually name a few things, which is why the, the, the name of the Lord, you hear about Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah, Jehovah. Right. You get all those different names. Right. Why? Because he is all of those things. But he's also, you know, Lord of Lord, King, King of Kings. King. All right. He is God almighty. But sometimes what you what you need specifically, he will come down and personally be that with you and for you. That's the beauty of the relationship that we have with God. He can be God of all. But then he comes down and be like in verse 25, when he tells Martha and Mary, and Jesus said unto her, I am the what? Resurrection. And the last verse, he told that blind man he was what? 
the light of the world. Don't worry about not being able to see through orbs in your, in your head. I give you light of perception is, is greater than that. But nevertheless, I still will give you light so that your orbs can see. Perception is a whole lot more than just vision. What we have in, as a natural being is natural vision and limited spiritual perception. We know that because what did Paul said about us being able to see in the spiritual realm? He said we see light, like we're looking through a what? A glass darkly. And when you look at this, it's like, you see that? You see how that, that, those windows are covered? Now, when people are close to that window, you can tell somebody's walking by there. You really can't tell who it is. But you can, you can basically, you can see outside, but you really can't see that well. That's like looking into how we look into the spiritual realm. So how do we, how do we ever get to understand what's going on out there? Well, what God says is, I'm going to give you information so you can understand. And when you see the shadows and the various shapes of things, you'll know that certain things that I'm telling you here, which are going on out there, is about to happen. But keep, out, keep on looking for the shadows. Like I just saw a bird fly by. You saw that? Okay. But the reality of it is I can't really tell you what kind of bird it was. But I knew it was a bird. You see? So as long as I had that information, because information is telling me from what I know about outside, birds fly. And what I saw flew. But then when you see somebody else walking by, you can. So I'm showing you the analogy that spiritual truth is just like that. And that's why sometimes it's so open to confusion because somebody can say, there's a truck outside. And who can disagree with them? Because <laughs> you can't look out there and go, well, I, no, no, trust me. Then there's the people that says, you can't see through that but I can. Oh, I can see. God has given me, mm, mm, I got that kind of, mm, there's a, you gotta watch out for folk like that. All right? They scare me. All right? Because what they see in out there, sometimes, when I say out there, I'm talking about in the spiritual realm, it's not always accurate. All right? and, so what, and, then, and a lot of times they do that, like what Jesus said, so that they can get the praises of what? Of men. They want people to think they're all that. To be, to be the best witness you can be is to be honest and truthful. I don't know. I can't tell you. Now, if something comes closer to the window, I might be able to see it, and probably we all can see it. So, you know, so be careful of those kind of things. But Jesus had to reveal himself to, the, to, to, to Martha and Mary, and Mary. I am the resurrection. You're seeing me as the God, which is why Martha and Mary both were able to say, I know that Lazarus is going to rise in the resurrection at the what? At the last day. Because they understand the what? The big picture. Just like we do. We understand. We know Jesus is coming. We know he came and was born. And we know he was crucified. And we know he's coming again. Can't nobody confuse us with that. But then when you open up and allow God to become the personal relationship God that he wants to be. And he wants to become all these various things to you. That's a lot of times when it takes faith and confidence in the Lord because God is about to tell you but hey what I can be this to you and whatever that this is that's who he can be and that's why the name of God is as big as as uh, as you can you there is no you can't name all the names because there, there may be a name there may be a Jehovah something that only you can relate to only you can relate to he goes, you know, I'm the Jehovah, and then he names that situation that you specifically need. So even when we say Jehovah Jireh, various things, that's still a, some, it's, it's smaller defined, but it's still somewhat what? Abroad. And, and, and I'll use the word public. But there's still some things that are really, really specifically just for you. All right? And we always have to keep that in mind. All right. I know that was a review, but I wanted to make sure I, 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 I nailed that down so that we can have confidence in our relationship with the Lord. All right. So then we talked, um, uh, we saw that how Jesus wept, and we said he wept because he was not sad that Lazarus died, but because what? He saw the heartache that Martha and Mary and all the townspeople had. All right. And so we, we uh, talked about that. All right, and then in verse 37, it says, And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the, the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? 
Now, they're putting two and two together. They're using logical th uh, uh, thoughts here. The man opened up the eyes of a blind man that never could see, couldn't hear, stop this man from dying. And do we do that? <laughs> we do it all the time, don't we? You know, Lord, you could have... you. You could have caused me to not to, to know that this big bill was coming, and I would have saved a little bit more money. Lord, you could have helped me to know that my car was about to break down, and I, I would have, Lord, you would have, you could have helped me to know that, you know, this was not going to be the best job, or, or that, you know, and we can go on and on and on and on and on, right, about a variety of things that we want the Lord to tell us so much ahead of time. But in reality, this shows us really how the relationship works. The Lord will give us what we need when we need it. And that's sometimes hard medicine to swallow because we think we need it when we want it. And, and it's difficult a lot of times for us to, to accept that because when we are hurting, guess what? We're hurting. When you got heartache, you ain't pretending. You're real. When you're confused, it's real. And we wonder, Lord, you know I'm confused. And if you would have just, if, won't you just come down and just give me the answer? And then you wake up tomorrow just as confused <laughs> as you was yesterday. And you're like, Lord, why don't you just give me the answer? And sometimes, because remember, our thinking is the thinking of this realm, of this, you know, three dimensional space, one dimensional time. That's our thinking. God is thinking in what? Eternity. So that's where it says that we have to trust him. It's hard. It's easy to say. It's hard to do. It's very hard. And we go see. We saw even Thomas when he said, when, when Jesus said, let's go down there. And Thomas said what? Well, let's go down and do what? Let's die with him. Because Thomas had faith that he could go down there and heal Lazarus. But he didn't have the confidence that he could keep them safe. He just figured that their, their anger of the, the religious leaders would overpower them and they would still end up dying. All right. So um, then in verse 39, and this is where we left off at, Jesus said, take ye away the stone. And then Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he has been dead four days. Now, keep this in mind. This ain't four days dead at Lee's funeral home, all right, where he's been, exactly, he's been embalmed and prepped up and everything. This is four days dead in the hot, humid, you know, Israeli, you know, desert. that's four days dead there, okay? Now we get a different picture. We're like, ooh, okay. We can understand why they were a little concerned. Don't, don't remove the stone. <laughs> all right he's been dead four days now look at what jesus says verse 40 jesus said unto her say i not unto thee wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute let's go back when 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 did he say this to her what, what is he talking about when was when did jesus and her have this conversation it's not recorded let me just cut to the cut to the point Say I not unto you, if thou wouldest believe, thou shalt see the what? Glory of God. He didn't say that to her in, re in the recorded portion. So what does that tell us? That there is what? There was other conversations. It tells us that they, this, that this is not the exhaustive converse, conversational uh, uh, record between Jesus, Martha, Mary, and probably Lazarus. Why did Jesus uh, have this re relationship with Martha and Mary and Lazarus? Because they, they had time to communicate. They were time to build a friendship. And there were things that were shared, just like how he's sharing with the disciples. Now, take Thomas, for instance. Thomas is one of Jesus' disciples. And when Jesus says, let's go down there to, uh, to, uh, to uh, heal Lazarus, his first thing was, is what? Words of confusion. He doesn't understand. And so Jesus is now reminding uh, Martha and Mary that I've talked to you about this. And look at how he says it. Look at, look at this. This is important because I want to show you something about even, even, even how we are. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that 
if thou wouldest what? Believe, thou should see what? The glory of God. In other words, didn't I tell you this already? I told you this. Exactly. Now, let's bring it home. There's things that we weep and cry and get all confused about and throw our hands up in the air and wonder, and yet God is saying, I told you this already. But it went, whoosh, it just, you know, we didn't hear it. It's like, you know, what do you say, water off a duck's back? It just would not stick in our minds. Rem the one thing I think we're going to be more surprised about when we get into eternity is how much communication we have had from the Lord that we just let go by like it was when. We grasp some of it. And I think all of us are guilty. I know I'm guilty of it because sometimes you get to realize as things happen, then you go back and you go, you know what? I knew this. I don't know how I knew this, but I knew this. I knew better than this. Or I, or I knew this was going to happen. Or, or whatever the situation is, we, we, there's something in us that is a witness to this really, truly didn't take me by surprise. I, I kind of, yeah, I saw this. I understand this. And I think it's important for us, this is one of the reasons, once again, why it's important to pray. Because during that time when you are praying with the Lord, he will reiterate things to you, right? And he will say things to you that will help you to bring up those things which were already given. And that's important to keep in mind. Not to mention his word. In times when you're talking to other people, and we're going to get to that in a minute. So keep this thought in mind because we're going to see this again. All right? Um, in verse uh, 41 it says then they took away the stone from the place where the dead lay and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said now here we go to another little situation that's important I just talked about prayer right what is Jesus getting ready to do pray. he's getting ready to pray look at this prayer All right, watch this father I thank thee that thou hast heard me All right? 42 and I know if that thou heareth me always, but because of the people which stand by, I say it, that they may believe that thou hast what sent me. All right, and then he finishes the prayer. All right, the first thing I want to point out: remember what Jesus was talking about the Pharisees, and he talked about how they like to do what kind of prayers? Long prayers, because they think that they're going to be what heard. How long was this prayer? All right. It, I mean, this was this is this was Jesus praying to the Father, but it was a real prayer. One of the things that we have to kind of scrub ourselves of from a traditional thing is that we have to pray, you know, for hours and hours and on end. Now, one of the reasons why and we're going to see this later on when we get into this, the people will say that is because Jesus will make this statement to Peter. He will say, "Could you not?" watch with me one 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 hour while I you know was praying all right and so people would jump on that and go well you should pray at least what an hour <laughs> and uh, I don't ascribe to that because uh, what that then does is it makes prayer a regiment and it gives um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for it, it, it gives processes to prayer when prayer is your heart to God's heart, right? It's like when you're ready to talk to your child, you're going, okay, I'm going to talk to them. So they really think I really care for, care for them. I have to at least talk to them for an hour. <laughs> do you do that? You don't do that. You say to them what you know you need to say to them so that they know you care for them, that you, you respect them, you, you want the best for them. And then when you finish saying it, you're done. Same thing with prayer. Now, sometimes it may take longer than, than a verse and a half. Sometimes it may be even shorter than that. But prayer should be real communication. All right? Don't let nobody tell you that you ain't praying because you didn't pray for two or three hours. But then there are times when you, you want to do it. All right? There are times when you want to just be immersed in that. There's no set 
rules and don't let nobody put no boundaries on you. You do what you know works for you and how you communicate. It's a personal thing. But at the same time, the key is do it. That's the key. You know, you have to have that communication. If you don't have the communication, then you're not praying. And the Bible does say pray what? Always. Without ceasing. Without ceasing. So that means that we should always have a communication going on with the Lord. All right? So uh, that's important to keep in mind. All right? So he says his prayer. Now, in the prayer, he says, Father, I thank thee that thou heard me. He has no problem understanding while he's speaking that the Father's hearing him. And he's also saying that he's praying um, not because he's trying to build up himself. He's actually praying what kind of a prayer? An intercessory prayer. He's really praying for those people that they might what? Believe. All right? And the reason he has to make this prayer, we're going to see this in a minute, because just because the, the Lord is about to raise Lazarus does not guarantee that everybody's going to believe in Jesus. And they're going to see it with their own eyes. And they're still not going to believe it. So Jesus is praying for those that, that need this, Lord. Help them that they might believe. Let's go on. Let's see what happens. Jesus made that prayer. You'd think everybody that saw it would believe. Look at verse 30, 30, uh, uh, 43. And when he had thus said, thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Let me put pause there for a minute because I, I heard a lot of people say, well, if he had just said, come forth, everybody in the grave would have came out. But that's why he had to say what? Lazarus, come forth. Well, I don't know. I'm no expert, you know, and how you call people from the dead. But I do probably guess this. I probably guessed that there were probably more than just one person dead named Lazarus. You see what I'm saying? So the thing I'm saying, the reason why I bring this out is you have to keep this in mind. That when God has something for you, nobody is going to take yours. It's, if it's, when Lazarus was, if he had said you or 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 man or he would have came, he he would have come forth. He called him by name because the people there would know who he's what calling. All right, I don't really subscribe to the fact that it, you know, because I'm sure there was somebody else on this on that planet named Lazarus. And he he would have came up too. Now, you know, been somebody in another country. All of a sudden, you see that guy named Lazarus. But Lazarus all over all over the world, just rising. Yes, sir. I, I believe right. Like he said, I he said I'm saying this just so the people will believe. Like I think he didn't even have to say it. Right. He just took the stone. The guy would have walked out. Mm -hmm. He just he was just doing that for our benefit. Exactly. Exactly. It's a lot that's being done for our benefit. All right. It's kind of like. You know, when 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 babies are learning to walk, and we're learning to we're learning how to walk in spiritual things. Uh, one of the things that we have to do is we have to put little little uh, cushions on the edges of the furniture, because you know they're gonna bump into it. And do you know how many things in the spiritual realm the Lord is just putting cushions on for us, just so we don't break our net bumping into stuff spiritually, All right? And so he's he's just trying to. Use the word, excuse me, but let me use the word dummy proof it. <laughs> because from a spiritual standpoint, we we don't get it. But that's why we are so reliant, number one, on his word and on the spirit of God. And if we allow the spirit to speak to us while we go through this word, our eyes will get open. It will happen because that's the only clue we got. We need God through his spirit and the word, which is hand written just for our perception our dimensional reality because in the real eternal sense uh, the word is a whole lot more than, than just these letters on a, on a, on on pages you'd be surprised how alive that's why the Bible talks about itself as being alive and what and quick all right so you got, you'd be surprised when we and that's also why the Bible says that the word Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never die. And in Proverbs, he says he has exalted his word above his name. So when we get into eternity and we go to look at the word, it probably won't be leather-bound book like this. It'll probably be something, I don't know, something, something, something other. <laughs> and yet we'll still be able to gain insight from it. All right? So I think that's important to keep in mind as well. All right. So he said, Lazarus, come forth. Verse 44, and he that was dead came forth. 
Now, how does he come forth? Bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. All right? So he's all tied up. He was able to come out the grave, the spiritual uh, uh, or, or, or the natural death, but he couldn't come out the natural clothes, the, nat nat the natural bindings that he had. All right? So what did Jesus say? Loose him and let him go. All right? So it wasn't a sense of, you know, he, here he is, he's resurrected, now and we're done. He said, now, I, I have resurrected him. Now you go do your part. Now we talked about that thing in your life that, or your situation that whatever it may be sometimes, and not everybody goes through it because not everybody has a Lazarus type of situation, but you may have something like that. This, this has been dead and been dead for a while, but when God decides to raise it and bring it back, that doesn't mean, well, well, all said and done now, nothing else to do. No. Continue the work. What now has to be done to loose that thing and to truly make it what? Free. Loose it and let him go. All right? So that's important to keep in mind as well. Now, look at verse 45. We're going to connect this to what we were talking about before in just a bit. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed what on him all right many of the jews many many what, what does what does that word many tell you it was a lot and what does it also tell you it was not what it was not all wait a minute what did he pray didn't jesus pray father i pray that they would when they see this that they would what believe Jesus prayed. Now, you try to tell me that if Jesus prays for you to believe, and everybody there that was watching it, you know, heard the prayer, and they saw the miracle, all heard the prayer, all saw the, saw the miracle, and many believed. What's, what's missing? We're missing the fact that all didn't believe because of unbelief. Let's go to the next verse. What I think about this nice though is that in verse 45 it says many and then in verse 46 it says but some. We got Bible dropper itis today. So just hang on to it. The devil don't he don't he don't he he, he don't like us going through this. Now look at verse 46. 46 says, but some of them went their way to the what? To the Pharisees. To do what? To tell on Jesus. I'm telling on Jesus. And they told the Pharisees what things Jesus had done. They didn't believe. They went back to who they have confidence in. And there's a lot of people, I don't care what Jesus does. They got confidence in what they have. That old traditional, that, 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 that you know, that, and because, and I have to say that, and, it, and not trying to be negative, because there's a lot of good, good, good folks out there. I mean, very good. But tr the tradition of sticking with old dead religion is sad, because we, we should not want religion. We should want what? Jesus. Jesus. Give me the Lord. Give me God, all right? Give me his word. Give me the Holy Spirit. I don't really want religious institutions and religious tradition because that is going to eventually be what fights against Jesus. Remember, the Antichrist is not coming as a wicked, lying, whoring, stealing, killing monster. The Antichrist and the false prophet is coming as a religious system, something that looks good. And that's why he's going to be so uh, appealing. And so many people are going to be drawn to him. Remember, the Antichrist is not anti, meaning uh, uh, something that's opposing in a attractiveness. It means in replace of. And, and basically, you could almost call him the replacement Christ. That's why Jesus says, many will come in what? My name and deceive many. All right. Yes. The, when you, the verse you quoted before, it always confused me when it says that his word 
would be exalted above his name. Mm -hmm. Is that why? For that reason that because people can come in his name and they don't I don't I, that doesn't necessarily seem to make sense. Well, um why he does it, I, I, I can't really say, but what it does, it gives me the understanding that he puts very much, a, a lot of importance on the word. I think that's what, um, that's what I kind of pull from that. Why he does it, I'm not sure. Um, because he even said that uh, heaven and earth should pass away. But my word. My word, and we all think that heaven is great because everybody wants to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So how could he allow heaven to pass away before word to stand? Mm -hmm. But see, this word is so important because this is the only way that we can really get back to him. Right. There's no other way. So he ha that's why so much emphasis put on this word. Because the word and the Holy Spirit, they all, and Jesus, they're all working together. They're all one. But it's, it's, the, it's, it's really amazing how he does it. It's just yeah. like to say some, some things I just don't understand I, why it's said. Right. It's just the way it is. And so I go with that, that it's a situation where I don't, I can't tell you why he's doing it, but I do know the result of what he's doing is that we are to truly value the word. We got to put high emphasis on it, which is also one of the reasons why throughout history, um, there has been nothing, there was no, ne there's never been any literature attacked more than this Bible. Because if we can kill this Bible, if we can kill the Word of God, then then you're not going to get people to truly find the Lord. So he's saying, he's, he, I think he's, what he's trying to say is, let me show you how much emphasis I'm putting on the Word. I'm exalting it above my name. Now, um, that's about all I can say upon, upon it. And I'm sure, once again, when we get into eternity, that statement that is in Proverbs will have a lot more to it than what we are able to comprehend in this three-dimensional, you know, uh, uh, aspect of time. You follow me? So, um, but it is something to keep in mind. All right? So, we see now that they done went and told the Pharisees. Verse 47, then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees uh, uh, and counsel and said, what do we? For this man doeth many, what? Miracles. All right. I think it's important. To, what what uh, version of Bible do you have? New King James. New King James. Okay. Anybody else have a Bible that says anything else other than miracles? Where you at? Forty-seven. It says signs. It says signs. It says signs. It says which which signs Bible? And evidence. Signs and evidence. That's the Amplified. Okay. All right. Um, as we go as we go along. Marvelous signs. Marvelous signs. Which one do you have? Uh, New Living Translation. Okay. King James. Okay. All right, we're gonna we're, we're going to um, at some at a certain point do a little a little uh, emphasis on Bible versions. I don't know if I'm gonna do it as a separate session, or I might do it as an insert, or I might just gather the information and give you the DVDs. I don't sure how, but it's important I think to understand that certain uh, versions of the Bible have a slant. Now I didn't say they were incorrect, because remember. Uh, you can't kill God's word as much as you would try. All right, you can't kill. It's like they couldn't kill Jesus. <laughs> you can't kill the word, and people will try to put a slant on it. But what's important is to recognize that number one, this Holy Spirit will always reveal it, and it has. And and, and also, um, the person reading it will still be able to get what God wants to be to gather, because who was the true teacher of the word? The Holy Spirit. And that's what people that try to put those little slants in it don't understand. See, you could call purple r green all you want. If the Holy Spirit wants you to understand that purple is purple, no matter what you call it, he will reveal it to you. And you can't understand the word anyway unless it's what? Reveal. Reveal. All right, so that's one thing that they miss. But with that being said, there are some other things. That's all I'm going to say on that now, but as we go along, uh, like I said, i got to figure out how I want to, to bring that in because it does take a little bit of time. So maybe if we get to one of those chapters where we don't have, we can do it in like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, then we'll add that in. Uh, but I think it's a good thing. But in the meantime, if you want to just kind of do some, some study, there's one person, Chuck Missler, that does a very good um, uh, analysis of it. You go to his website. And he breaks it down very well. There are a lot of other people that break it down as well, but I like Chuck Missler because 
I think he's the fairest. He's not trying to put the people that put those those uh, uh, some of the right exactly. He ain't trying to say they were devils or whatever. But he's also trying to show you their slant mm -hmm. and their their biases, which is important to keep in mind when you're reading different versions of the Bible. All right, uh, let's finish this up. So uh, look at verse 48. Now the the the, uh, the Pharisees and the uh, religious leaders want to kill Jesus. Verse 48 it says, "If we let him alone, all men." will believe on him. They don't want Jesus to believe. They don't want men to, be to believe on Jesus. That's right here, their number one focus. I don't want all men to believe on Jesus. Boy, who, do, who does this sound like? Look at the next one. And the Romans shall come and take away both our, our place and our nation. Now, who has the living Bible? What does it say in the Living Bible? 48. That's 49. Our temple and our nation. Does anybody else have any words besides our place and our nation? Any other words? Okay, all right. And what I think about is interesting. The, the the Message Bible says our means of wealth, which I thought was interesting, which means our what? Our place, which also can be our class, our status. When you are in line and you are in first place, somebody's come and take away your place, all right, which is why this this very good word. You place, Yeah, the, the 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 Jewish nation in the Roman, got in the Roman, in the in the Roman nation was like an aquarium. Your house is not filled with water, but you can have an environment of water in your house. That the living creatures that have to live in water can survive in. So, the Roman nation was the Roman nation, but in that nation they had a little little cubicle, a little aquarium, a little atmosphere. That the Jewish nation could still exist in, but they they did not have their own nation, but they existed in a bubble in the Roman nation. But there were certain things they could not do, and which was a clear sign that they were not a sovereign nation, but they were a collection of people. They could not execute anybody, All right? And they had to have uh, they, they they didn't have territorial rights. You know where where you were supposed to be. They did allow them to, to maintain their temple, and they did allow them to maintain their their uh, their priests, which we're going to come come to in a minute. But they would not allow them to, to to do any more executions, which is why all those stonings were all impromptu. <laughs> if you got stoned, it was one of them impromptu stones. It wasn't a trial, but if you wanted to have an official trial, an official situation where you officially put somebody to death, you had to go to the Romans, which is what they're going to do here, all right? Right, but it was, um, uh, they, their nation was still intact, but they were not a nation. Roman was the nation. Rome was the nation. All right, now look at this. Um, 49, which is very important here. All right. It says, and one of them named Caiaphas, being the what? High priest that same year. All right. Said unto them, uh, ye know nothing at all. First thing he's talking, he's talking to the, the religious leaders. He's saying, you don't know anything at all. We're going to come back to this. This is so important. 50. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Look at this. 51. And this spake he not of himself. 
Caiaphas didn't say this. Look at this. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation and not for that nation only, but that also he should, he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. All right. This is important for this reason. G the, uh, uh, the Lord will always have respect to his established system. The Lord was the one that set up the aspect of having a priest, a high priest. The Lord did this. He, gave, he did this to the, the writings of Moses. It was a agreement or a allowance to have a what? king, a king. But it was God that said you will have a what? High priest. So when this when this situation happens and the Lord wants the office that he has established to announce what is about to happen, it still happened. Even though the man in that office was corrupt, was a a fighter against Jesus, he still had to prophesy about the death of Jesus. Didn't even realize what he was saying. Now, let's bring this all back. Remember what I said? Number one, God has probably said things to us more than we can ever imagine. And you probably have been used of God more than you ever can imagine to help somebody. You had no idea. You saying words and you just, but that's when the Holy Spirit... Now, and that's from a standpoint of you praying and trying to yield your life as much as you can. Now, here's Caiaphas. This is a man, he's trying to kill Jesus, but he's still the what? High priest. He's still in that office, and that office is going to proclaim Jesus. So, look at what he says here. He says, first of all, he says to the, to the Pharisees, ye know nothing at all. Wait a minute. Let's take it back. Caiaphas is not saying it. What is the Holy Spirit saying to those people? You, know you don't know nothing. The Holy Spirit is saying that. You don't know nothing at all. Not that, well, you're confused about some things. Or you're confused about a little things. What does the Holy Spirit tell them? Through this high priest? You don't know nothing. You don't know a thing. All right? And then uh, it says, uh, nor consider that this is expedient for us. They don't even consider the fact that Jesus has come and that it is expedient for, for the nation. What, for what nation? That one man should die for the people, that the whole nation should not perish. Okay, so he, he's dying for just the nation of Israel? Oh, wait a minute. And spake he not of himself. Uh, oh, wait a minute. No, let's get to uh, die. One man should die for, for the people, and that uh, the whole nation should not perish. I missed something here. Where, where am I trying to find that at? Okay, okay, 51, yes. And this he spake not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, 52, and not for that nation only. For God so loved the world. Oh. But that he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered where? Abroad. That means everywhere. everywhere. And he didn't say the Jewish people. He said the what? Children of God. It's important to keep that in mind. So here's, but who said this? Whose mouth was using? Who, who, who spoke this? The high priest, Caiaphas. Spoke something that was a prophecy of what Jesus was about to do. But was Caiaphas going to be a beneficiary of this? No. He wasn't going to be. See? So it's important to keep that in mind. So you have two situations person in the office that God has designed that was corrupt. But then you also got somebody else who's going to be part of this, somebody that's following Jesus through his whole ministry and still was what? Corrupt. All right, so let's finish this up now. All right. So 50, uh, 53. Uh, 52, yes. Uh, not for the nation. Oh, we did that. 53. Then from that day forth, they took counsel. Who was they? The Pharisees. Together. For to put him, who was him? Jesus. To death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went 
thence into uh, a country nearby the wilderness unto the city called Ephraim. And he there continued with his what? Disciple. All right. So he continued with his disciple. Now, this is important. And we're going to bring this out. We're going to show you some things about uh, Resurrection Sunday or Easter as we go along here. 55. And the Jewish what? Passover was not, was not at hand. Many went unto the country. Uh, to the country up into Jerusalem before the what? Passover to purify themselves. Jesus is about to be put to death. What happens on the Passover? They kill a what? They kill a lamb. All right? And so a lot of times we wonder, you know, that this was fulfillment. When Jesus uh, dies on that cross, he is fulfilling what actually happened back during the time before Moses even started his campaign. He was just beginning. He was showing the signs of those 10 plagues that hit. And that 10th plague was what? The death of the firstborn. But then if you were in the house and you had you had to put blood on the over the door. How did you put it? You put it on the top of the doorpost. You put it on the foot of the doorpost. And you put it on the two sides. What does that look like? A Roman cross. Even showing how he was to die. All right. Um, but that's the Passover. And as much as, and, and once again, I, I'm going to bring this up because traditionally our church history does not want to link Passover with crucifixion. They don't bring those together. You, if you ever notice, they don't really talk about those two. And it, but there's a reason why. And we're going to get into that as we go through this in the book of John. Uh, but I want to uh, uh, tell you uh, this from a standpoint. The, the Jewish um, history and the church history has a lot of conflicts a lot of conflicts and it gets to the point to where it's almost like what we're reading now the religious leaders versus the followers of Jesus they're all Jewish people but they got this split going on that's why when Jesus did the miracle many believe but some didn't alright so keep this in mind as we go through this and um Let's finish up here. It says in verse 56, Then sought they for Jesus and spake uh, uh, themselves as they stood in the temple. Uh, what think ye uh, that he will come to the feast? <laughs> Not only is he going to come to the feast, he's about to what? Fulfill the feast. All right. 57. Now both the the chief priests and the Pharisees had given communication that if any man knew where he went, where he should show it that they might what? Take, Take him. him. All right. So there it is. The word done went out. All right. Who's, who uh, ever sees the Lord, whoever sees Jesus, let us know. No. We need to come grab him. Somebody's going to fulfill that 